The monster of this week was a kind of weird one because I couldn't tell what he was at first. I think he's likely an anteater, but at first I also thought he might have been a possum. Probably because of those eyes. Just those eyes that remind me of him. Alright, uh, so this week's episode, they decided to delay Yukari's introduction because they wanted to turn this more into a bit of a bonding episode between our initial trio. And while I was kind of concerned that this might have turned into a bit of a filler episode, those fears quickly vanished and this turned out to be a pretty good one. The premise of the episode itself was simple, they were making a cream puff dish for the daughter of one of their favorite patishiers. The smell of their baking lures Kylie out of his hole, they defeat him, and they present a really fancy looking swan cream puff to the daughter. I mean Jesus, that's master chef quality right there. Now on paper this might all sound kind of simple, but just like this swan, it's all about the details. First of all, their attempts at making cream puffs were absolutely hilarious. Points to this anime for showing that it actually takes opening the oven to make a rising dough fall, as opposed to just making a big sound. But yeah, I just find characters becoming progressively more exhausted after each failure to be great slapstick. I'm actually going to save this little bit of gratuitous English from Aoi for future use. And my favorite bit was seeing each of their failed confections, from the puffs looking like literal crap, volcanoes, or... the molded from Resident Evil 7? Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna hold on to this just in case, just put it down there. Okay. Just in case. Unfortunately, after all the enjoyable slapstick, then comes the fallout. Himari and Aoi call it quits saying that they have other things to do, leaving Ichika to try and figure out what exactly went wrong, and she ends up getting advice from the very person that they were going to give the dessert to. Since this lady Mariko is a ballerina, she ends up asking what she does to pick herself up after a performance that doesn't go so well. And Mariko simply tells her that she thinks about the first time she got into ballet and uses those memories to push forward. Okay, while this message is pretty cliche and admittedly pretty darn cheesy, I do think it's an important lesson to take to heart. As matter of fact as it might sound, all too often we do end up forgetting about what drove us into pursuing certain ambitions, either because we became too passionate, or overly concerned about failure. Whatever the case, if the original drive is lost, then eventually all of our ambitions will start coming to a screeching halt. Thus, if we want to keep moving forward, we have to remember what got things moving in the first place. In the case of our heroines, it wasn't just that they wanted to make a dessert for Mariko, but also because they were having fun doing it together. So with a little teamwork, the girls managed to produce some proper pot shoe and bake up some nice cream puffs. They also achieved another major accomplishment that prevents this episode from being considered just plain old filler. They started calling each other by first name. Okay, so this whole name calling bit is a bit of a cliche in anime just to show that the characters are growing closer and everything. But hey, it's a cute scene so who's complaining? And with these newly formed bonds, they were able to take on the monster weighing right outside their door the next day because he was too tired after gorging on cream puffs all day. You know, I think I might have found my new favorite pre-cure villain ever. Anyway, the fight this week, unfortunately, felt the shortest. There might have been even shorter ones in the previous episodes, but this one definitely felt the shortest and most underwhelming. Not that it was devoid of good moments, at one point Aoi even punches the guy with what looks like a drill. Not that I'm familiar with anything like that. And together the three create a new combination finisher. It's a little bit all over the place, but it looks nice at least. Thus the episode ends with them delivering the swan puff, and we also get a taste of next week's episode. While this might not have been the best episode so far, I think Aoi and her episode still hold that title, I do think it was a necessary little detour they needed to take before fully assembling the team. Something a lot of recent Sentai have been doing wrong, including this season, is putting too much focus on the red leader of the group, when really it should be about the whole damn team. So it's nice when a show that airs an hour after them on Sunday mornings actually follows through with that concept with episodes like this. Was this episode a little slow? Yes. Did it drag a little? Yeah, but I'd rather watch a slightly slower paced show than one that tries to rush through 7 character introductions in 2 episodes. With all that said though, I am looking forward to next week's episode and the debut of the Precure that sounds like a Vocaloid. Until then though... I think I'm gonna go trim the hedges just in case any sort of evil moldy monsters decide to come a-knocking. Oh, and uh... 
Farewell for now, my friends. <laughs>